June 2018. The time, the effort, the hours. Friday is long training run day. I really want to do it, but I think I'm going to have to stop, Nige. Ten minutes later, I'm sitting in the local Costa and I just know the dream of the 100 miles is over. Hello and welcome to the Fat Man to Iron Man Coach Marshy Running Podcast. I am Neil Marsh, Coach Marshy, and I'd like to welcome you today with a disclaimer that I have a qualification as a level three personal trainer, a GP referral exercise specialist. I also hold a sport and exercise science degree and I am a running coach. So I'd like to think that everything that we talk about today comes from a place of balanced science um, evidence that is out there, along with the anecdotal experience of running myself. So welcome to today's episode. How are you? Are you well? And how's your running week going? How's your journey going? How are you getting on? For me, things are starting to look up. And just as this title would suggest of the whole podcast, you know, the fat man to iron man, I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to take on what would be an equally as big step for me and an equal as big a process as that one was to achieve what it is I want to achieve that next level if you like um so bring on the next five years if it takes as long as that one did um but I'm going to certainly attack it and go for it so all on a positive working towards that 2020 goal of running every day and hitting that mileage as well so what am I talking about in the overview some might suggest that this is going to refer to injury today it's not it's going to talk about the mechanism as to why I didn't achieve that goal. And that last point that I made there just before the intro, 10 minutes later, and I'm sitting in the local Costa, and I just know that the dream of the 100 miles was over. So, yes, training was going really well. And there it was. The dream was going to be over. I knew it. I just felt something in my foot on that training run, about seven miles in. If I remember um, running in a local country park with my good training partner, Nigel, and we were running through and I just remember something happening in my foot um, and it really twinged and the dream was over and it turned out to be plantar fasciitis and the recovery has been long from that for anyone who suffered from that. Um, I'd imagine you may have felt something similar, but We'll leave injury for another day and we'll, we'll talk about it. But the truth is, if I look deep inside, I wasn't doing the 1% well, the 1% theory. I wasn't doing it well. So that's what today's episode is going to be about. It's all going to be about the 1% improvement theory, but linked to a recreational runner. So what is it that I mean by the 1% theory? So the 1%, I'm referring to something that was very famously documented um, around the London Olympics in 2012 in particular, but all around British cycling and Team Sky in the Tour de France with, you know, Dave Bra Brailsford, the team leader, this guy who's really passionate about sports science and believes in getting inside the minds and seeing through the eyes of his athletes the way they see the world to get what he called marginal gains. That idea of a culture where we want that self-improvement, where we all clump together to get an equal goal. And sometimes there's a lot of work that goes into that. There's some interviews out there um, that are really good on this topic with Dave Brailsford himself. And it's something that I totally buy into and believe. Um, it's the marginal gains. But the marginal gains by what happens if you improve a lot of things by 1%? Exactly. Quite a lot. I can hear you thinking about it right now. So what if we do what we can with what we've got right now? Could we improve as a recreational runner? 
could our running improve as a recreational runner if we took what we have and tried to improve ourselves by 1%? Yes, I 100% believe in that. And if you think you're already there, then perhaps this episode isn't for you because I think we can all improve um, when it comes to our running and as people as well. So just the 1% factor, let's focus on that for a second. And let's talk about it in terms of recreational runners and where we're at now and where we'd want to be and how it would go. So I'm going to focus on three main points which you could improve, which I could improve and that I've learned to improve over my running journey. So three main points which are easy to improve. What you're doing by a small margin just each time you do it and the big differences that that could make. Okay. So going back to that beginning opening, this is where point one for me is something that I can reflect on in that moment. And it's probably had a bit of a two year hangover. But had I've got this point right back then, where would I be? Because I believe the 1% would have differed quite significantly. Bear with me on this. So three main points. Let's go for the first one. Stretching post run. When you go out running, stretching post run, who does this? Ask that question right now. Do you spend time running directly after you finish? Once you've done that time of running, do you spend any time at all stretching? How long do you really take after a training run or when you run with friends to stretch before you crack on with your day? Honestly, think about that. So I believe, and I think there's lots of things out there that would back this, I think as a minimum, you should take five to 15 minutes period, probably after at the end of a training run and actually allocate it for stretching. Stretching those calves, stretching those hamstrings, stretching those glutes, stretching those quads, getting those four things right. If we talk about a really basic principle within that, if it's obvious, then it's probably the right answer. So don't get all classy and OTT with what type of stretches you should do. Let's get on the edge of the curb and hang off it and stretch our calves. You know, something as simple as that. So just that 1% change in effort. Could you do that? Could you allocate a five to 15 minute period? I know time's short and we're all busy and we've got to crack on with life. Got to make the kids lunch boxes for the next day. We've got to get in and watch EastEnders, whatever it is. But there's the point, right? Can you allocate that time, just that small amount of time? And if you did it every time and improve that by 1% each time you do it, you're not only going to reduce the chances of injury, reduce the chances of being tight for the next day or the next run, but you're also giving the body the stretch it deserves after putting that effort into that run. And just that 1% improvement is going to make a huge difference to you. Second point, which I've rethought and focused on, something that you could implement. Do you do stretching specific sessions? So what I mean by that is a designated session, you know, dedicated to mobility and stretching for running. Who's really doing this? Do we put the time into it? Some will. Don't get me wrong. And they are very much the recreational runners that are making massive progress. But if you look at Strava, Garmin, any other platform or app which you use to record the number of hours that you put into running and compare that to the number of hours that you specifically put into the longevity of running, such as specific sessions for stretching and strength and conditioning. I bet you it doesn't add up. Or if it does, are you doing the right sort of stuff within that session? Are you keeping it basic? There's a reason why the basics are boring and it works. Because it works. That's why the athletes do it. But for us, recreational runners, do we have to go through this heartache of sitting on the side because we didn't do that 1% improvement? 
I would recommend when it comes to a stretching specific session, the SSS, at least one session a week for a recreational runner. If time will allow it, do more. But let's just put one specific session 20 to 30 minutes in for your stretching plus point one stretching after every run and let's see the difference that that can really make and then the third one this is real sports science for me this is where the science you've got to be a believer in sports science because we're going to talk mindset we're going to talk your mindset okay and that's somewhere else that i'd really like to improve on by one percent okay with that mindset can you improve it by 1%? What I mean by this is, can you work on positive imagery of you completing your run, whether that be a training run, whether that be a race, whatever it is, can you improve on that positive imagery that you use in your head? Second point comes around a theory that I would like to talk about in depth on a podcast in terms of running, and that's the chimp theory. Okay, the chimp paradox. If you've not read the book, go and read the book. It's definitely worth it. It's um, it's worth investing that time in. Audio book while you're running, whatever. Just listen to it. It's really important because it gives this concept of knowing that on that given day, you've given your best. Now, I don't necessarily mean faster or maximum effort. I mean, in that given moment, have you achieved what you can have you achieved the best you could be on that day? It goes into a lot more depth, that that theory and that paradox. But if we just use that in a mindset with that positive imagery, you giving your best effort, you can be confident that you've given your best effort in that moment. And that starts to change that mindset to a different way of thinking. And that little bit of improvement of 1% can start to occur. And then the third point with mindset, positive self-talk. Who does this? Who reframes their mindset? Who reframes it into a positive? Oh, no, I've got to run six miles today. Do you know what? I'm going to run six miles today and I'm going to be really confident that I can get to the end of that run and feel good at the end of it. That's all three things I just talked about. Positive self-talk knowing that I'm giving my best on the day and that positive image of me finishing that run. Can you shift it? Oh, I've got to run six miles today. I'm going to run six miles today. I'm going to give it the best I can on this given day. And at the end, I'm going to feel really good. Just that little shift, 1%. Focus on that and focus on the above points of success in the moment and how it will feel and how it will work that positive self-talk. So there are many other areas that we very much could improve on by 1%. So nutrition, sleep, the equipment, the aerodynamics of what you're wearing, even that, you know, when they look at the cycling, they were looking at nuts and bolts on the bikes. Could they improve those by 1% across the whole bike? You know, there's so much behind this. But for us as recreational runners, we want to see change. There is a innate side of human life that wants to improve and be better and fulfillment and little things. We could do that. But the point is, is as a recreational runner, if we start practicing a few of them, and I mean a, just a few of them on a regular basis and improve by that 1% in multiple areas, then what you get is one of my favourite quotes of all time. With lots of little bricks, you can build big castles, right? I would say so. So don't focus on everything I've just said. Don't try and change the nutrition, the sleep, the equipment, the aerodynamics, the mindset, the stretching specific sessions, the stretching after running. Don't try and change everything at once. But can we take three of them? and improve them by just 1% every week? Can you give it a go? Let's try that concept. I'd be interested to get any feedback if you could do that. It'd be great. Um, Something that I've been implementing in recent weeks again, and that's where the change has come. The change has started to come, 
I'm really enjoying the training and the challenge of improving by 1%. So what I want you to do is try and take three areas over this next week, try and improve it by 1% and just do them slightly better than the week before. And let's just see those incremental 1% changes, compounding effect. All these things are out there in the world for other things. Why can't we do it as recreational runners? We can. We definitely can. But can you practice this approach regularly? So to take this home right now, can you practice this approach on a regular basis in a few areas which makes difference to your running and your fitness goals? Let me know. Do write in, do comment. I'm, I'm really excited by those guys that have written into me on various social media platforms and sent messages regarding podcast episodes. I'm really grateful for that. So thanks very much. Do get in contact about this one as well. So if you enjoyed the episode, I want you to head over to my YouTube channel for running tips and on how to advice to help your training and to learn more about my journey as well and see what you can get. I want to pay that forward and keep paying it forward. That's what people did to me. And that's what I want to do for you. So please don't forget to rate this podcast and give it a review. That would be really appreciated. And also don't forget to share it with anyone that you think might have enjoyed this content today or the previous episodes itself. But what I would like to say is thanks very much for being here. Thanks very much for joining me on this episode, the 1%. I really enjoy talking about it. I really enjoy applying it to my clients as well. And I hope you enjoyed yourself. And we can meet here again next week to discuss more on the Fat Man to Iron Man Coach Marshy running podcast. Mm-hmm.